Hello and warm welcome to Medicinas podcast series where we bring you insightful conversation with leading experts in medical field. Hi, I'm your host Dr. Swarika Bhatt and today we are diving deep into emergency medicine with our famous and again we are having a re-episode with him with the second episode uh, Dr. Tushau Prasad. Dr. Tushau Prasad is an emergency physician who is passionate about providing quality care to patients in critical situations and improving the healthcare system. Welcome Dr. Tushau to the podcast again. We are excited to have you here. Thank you so much Dr. Samarika. It's always a pleasure to come to MedSynaps and interact and have a quality conversation. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. And without further ado, we'll start with our first question that is uh red flags in emergency cases what are the key warning uh, signs that demands immediate attention in emergency cases so basically in uh, whenever you are uh, practicing or working in the emergency department there are few conditions which require immediate actions and uh, this philosophy of acting fast acting quick is called the golden hour now what it means is uh, whenever you get a case uh, a patient in your emergency department the first 60 minutes matters a lot if i were to give an example let me take an example of heart attack or as we call it the acute myocardial infarction now as we know acute myocardial infarction or heart attack can be very fatal if not treated aggressively and identified early so the initial action in a case of acute myocardial infarction would be taking the patient on a monitored unit in a monitored unit checking the ecg within the first 5 to 10 minutes examining the patient and sending the relevant investigation now acute myocardial infarction can be detected on the ecg and at times through a test called troponin which is a which is a biomarker for heart attack if your emergency department is equipped with point of care tests and good uh, diagnostics you may be able to diagnose a heart attack in the initial 15 to 20 minutes then it is very important to decide whether to thrombolize the patient or refer this patient to a facility where the angiography and angioplasty can be done so all this decision making clinical examination testing needs to be done in the first hour it is said that if you do these actions in the first hour the outcome of the patient the survival uh, chances of the patient increases manifold so to summarize uh, in the emergency department the first 60 minutes is called the golden hour and here you have to simultaneously examine the patient you have to treat the patient and as well as you have to counsel the patient and the next to rel- the next two patients relatives to ensure that you have all the permissions in place to proceed with the treatment so uh, dr tushau it will be the warning signs will be same for the elder patients the golden hour and the pediatric patient as well or there will there will be a difference so uh, if i were to talk about uh, the warning signs now there are a few warning signs when a patient comes into the emergency department it totally Uh, sort of activates the emergency physician uh, uh, let me give the example of symptoms like a chest pain a chest pain as we know can be a heart attack a patient who is uh, not fully conscious or he may be drowsy this may be uh, a stroke in in progression we may have a patient who is a victim of an accident with severe breathing difficulty this may be a pneumothorax we may have a child who has been persistently having loose motions and vomiting and may be suffering from dehydration this again becomes a very big warning sign we may have an elderly patient who had a fall at home because of which they may have incurred an internal brain injury this also is a warning sign so as per the age group the elderly the child the adult the female population we have to ensure that signs and symptoms like chest pain severe headache altered sensorium uh, severe loose motions and vomiting bleeding uncontrollable all these are warning signs for which you have to act very aggressively treat and as well as diagnose and proceed with the treatment 
Okay, so that was a very comprehensive answer you have given. So let's move on to the next question. Uh, let's discuss something challenging, uh, mass casualty events. Like how do you handle uh, patient triage in such a situation? So correct. So as we know, uh, specifically in, in India, there are a lot of places where a, a big gathering happens. Uh, the best example that I can give at the moment is the Mahakum, which is happening in Prayagraj. So whenever you have gathering of such huge number of people, it is imperative uh, from the administrators and from the state management department's point of view that they have the necessary uh, the necessary system in place. So uh, what I would say is whenever you have uh, an information that there would be a gathering of a lot of people, you have to ensure that you have a nearby hospital. If you don't have a nearby hospital, you will have to create a medical center where you would have to place an emergency director. Now this emergency director, this doctor would be a senior doctor who would oversee the medical treatment, the medical operations and under him there would be uh, different physicians who would uh, ensure that all the patients who come to the medical center are treated aggressively. So uh, whenever we are tackling a mass casualty incident, as I said, the incident commander or the emergency director, it's his responsibility to ensure that there are this triaging system which is in place. Now what do I mean by triage is to sort out. As we know, in a mass casualty incident, different people will have different severity of injuries. So the doctor has to ensure that the triaging or the sorting happens and the most critically uh, injured patient is treated aggressively and firstly. Uh, there would be a few dead people also who will be brought to this medical center. So the dead people are put it, are, are, are separated and they are uh, placed in a separate area. But the whole idea is to treat the ones where you have maximum chances of survival. So in a mass casualty incident, the most important thing is the triaging of the victims or the patients who come to enter. And usually these are color-coded triaging systems where red stands for the acutely injured, the black stands for dead, the green stands for someone who can, who can walk, who can talk, and a yellow uh, code is given to a patient who can follow simple commands. So that way we can treat the patients who are severely injured and save maximum lives possible. Okay, so as we have touched upon very important aspect of Mahakum happening in India right now, so there must be mass casualties or emergency requirements. So in, in such high stressful environment, how do uh, doctors maintain clear communication and maintain the protocols? Correct. So as I said, the preparation towards such event is very important. As I said, uh, this is a multi-department activity where you need the support of the state department, you need the support of the health services, you need the support of the traffic police, the police and other uh, departments from the state health authority. Uh, whenever uh, there is uh, uh, an organization of such uh, mass gatherings, as I said, uh, there should be a medical center in place. Now, the medical center is, is, is headed by the incident commander or the emergency director to ensure that, the, that there is a hierarchy maintained in what actions need to be taken and how. There is a communication tool that is used in, in stressful scenarios like these, which is called as the SBAR method, where S stands for situation, B stands for background, A stands for assessment, and R stands for recommendation. So let us suppose uh, we are at the medical center uh, uh, near uh, the Mahakum and unfortunately there is a stampede scenario that happens in Mahakum and if there were victims brought to me, so then if I need to evacuate a patient, I need to communicate to the referring hospital. So it may sound something like this so i would describe the situation like this so uh, i have a 65 year old female patient who unfortunately 
got injured during a stampede scenario so this is your situation in the background we have to say what is the patient suffering from or the previous medical condition so this female patient has diabetes and blood pressure then comes a where i have to share my assessment finding uh, on assessment this female patient is not in her full consciousness and seems to be in altered sensorium her heart rate her blood pressure her saturation her respiratory rate i would uh, share it with the forward hospital and the last thing is r where uh, we share what is recommended for the patient so i would say that this patient would require immediate ct scan to ensure there are no injuries bar communication tool we can share the most important aspects of patient's clinical condition and history and everyone can be on the same page so this communication tool that is sbar is really uh, helpful in such a critical and high stress situation what it does is everyone speaks the same language everyone uses the same method and in a very short time a very crisp description of patient's condition is shared okay so that was a very well put together answer so uh, dr tachau can you help us understand the escalation protocol to our audience uh, especially a deteriorating patient how do you go about it correct so uh, as we know that in the emergency department there can be varied uh, patients who come to seek uh, to seek help to seek care now uh, as we discussed the triaging protocol now suppose there are 10 patients coming in simultaneously to the emergency department all emergency department have a triaging tool in place what it means is there are color coding uh, of patients done at the entry point of the department so let us suppose someone who has come in with a uh, uh, loss of consciousness and history of trauma so these patients need to be seen immediately and they are tagged as red patients these red patients are supposed to be seen immediately without any delay now let us suppose there is a patient who had a twisted ankle but can sort of uh, you know uh, give his own history and, and can be seated on a wheelchair a patient like this who is in full consciousness can speak and just has some simple injuries can wait up to 30 minutes so the way we escalate the patients is depending on the clinical condition and the triaging score there are different types of triaging tools available there is a start triaging system which is used in mass casualty disaster scenarios there is emergency severity index which is used in different emergency departments there is a south african triage system or the sats triage tool which is used to ensure that the most critical patient are addressed are seen first and thereby escalated to a different level now whenever a patient is too sick uh, there are two uh, areas where the patient may be admitted one is the intensive care unit and the second would be the high dependency unit we use a score called new score or the national early warning sign score which categorizes the patient into the highest risk of clinical deterioration and patients who have a low risk of clinical deterioration so this way we can escalate the care for patients who have a high new score and patients who have a low new score may be admitted in a unit where uh, the criticality would not be that much uh, can you uh, stress upon uh, the critical outline actions in a time sensitive condition correct so there are a few there are few conditions uh, in emergency medicine wherein if the patient presents with these condition you have to be extremely aggressive uh, one example that we spoke about was heart attack or acute myocardial infarction let me give you one more example now uh, if victims of accidents road accidents are brought to you there is a condition called tension pneumothorax where because of the injury to the chest the pleura or the outer surface of the lung gets injured because of which there is excessive accumulation of air inside the thorax or the chest cavity which can compromise the patient's uh, heart functions so if you have a patient a road traffic accident patient and in severe respiratory distress 
complaining of chest pain and you see that, that there is air expansion happening only on one side of the chest you will have to be extremely aggressive to treat this condition called tension pneumothorax there is one more condition called septic shock where the patient is uh facing a complication of an infection now the most severe complication of an infection is called septic shock where the patient has a uh, low uh, level of consciousness the patient has low blood pressure or the patient's respiratory rate is on the higher side so acute myocardial infarction tension pneumothorax septic shock uh, conditions like these are extremely extremely fatal and if the right treatment is not initiated in the first hour or the golden hour the chances of patient having a poor outcome increases manifold so to summarize in the emergency department the doctor has to be extremely vigilant to first triage the patient to escalate the care and then in the first hour start the most critical intervention that would save patient's life thank you so much dr tushau for sharing such a wonderful insight i'm sure our audience will get a great insight of it, out of it and thank you for joining in and thank you to our viewers for tuning in and remember if you are a healthcare professional who is eager to delve deeper into medical topics or have questions do not hesitate us to join on medsynapse platform medsynapse platform is not just a resource it's a dynamic space where you can connect with your medical peers participate in meaningful meaningful discussions and contribute to the ongoing evolution of healthcare so until next time stay tuned stay healthy take care